All right, Psalm 39, let's call this one While We Wait Around the Wicked, understanding that David once again understands the peril of possibly saying the wrong thing as the wicked may be trying to provoke him into snatching defeat out of the jaws of victory. Once again, in this psalm that has a lot to do or seems to have a lot to do with hard times that David might have brought on himself as it is literally going to start out in verse one. I said, I will guard my ways that I might not sin with my tongue. I will guard my mouth with a muzzle so long as the wicked are in my presence. He is going to talk about his commitment to be mute and not say anything that once again could make it worse. But sometimes silence is simply denial. And so David's circumstance is such that he has to say something. But seemingly in wisdom, he is once again going to avoid the temptation to inappropriately lash out at his enemies, simply asking God, help me measure my days and quite possibly understand how long this is going to last. And even if he is not asking God to help him measure his days so that he can possibly see some sort of outdate, he seems to be appealing to God to help him make the best use of the time he will spend in this misery. As he will go on to say in verse seven, and now, O Lord, for what do I wait? That's the title. My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of the fool. I am mute. I do not open my mouth, for it is you who have done it. Once again, David recognizing the distinction between his Psalm 18 struggles, struggles in which God eventually delivers unjust enemies over into his hand and his struggles that have everything to do with things that God is allowing him to suffer because of wrongs he has done. And so as he goes on to acknowledge the ways in which during those times when God is the one behind the suffering because it is a rebuke or a consequence for things that we have done, God has the ability to seemingly consume all that is dear to us. And so David is going to say in this time in his final plea, God, please give me a moment of peace before I am the one who in fact departs and is no more. And the two things, or at least two things that seem to stand out to me were one, the way in which David appreciated the need to measure his days. Once again, it's not completely clear to me why he asked God to help him number his days, but it reminded me of times in which we are in a holding pattern, especially in times during which our waiting can be compounded by suffering to the degree that it can tempt us to confuse our Psalm 18 moments with our Psalm 38 and Psalm 39 moments. Once again, our Psalm 18 moments being times when we are unjustly suffering at the hands of others, our Psalm 38 and 39 moments being times when our suffering is related, at least in part, to stuff we've done to others and indirectly done to ourselves. And so here, when David is wise enough, quite possibly with God's help, to discern that his suffering has everything to do with God's punishment on him, not his enemies, he has then positioned himself to make the best use of the time, understanding that the more time he spends fixing whatever provoked God to put him in this situation, the less likely he is to have to return to this situation from which he is requesting some sort of reprieve. So my prayer for you is my prayer for me. To the degree we find ourselves in difficult situations, may we first have God uh, grant us the discernment to understand whether this is a Psalm 18 moment or a Psalm 39 moment. And to the degree it is a Psalm 39 moment, may we spend our period of waiting further asking God to help us overcome whatever we might have done to get ourselves in a difficult situation so that God willing, we can make self-imposed, needless suffering a thing of the past.